Dan Oman, Mike Beer of the Feature Race at Aqueduct on Sunday is the $100,000 Gander Stakes for three-year-old New York breads going a one-turn mile. Let's take a peek at this field. We've got seven entered. Silly K, the nine to five morning line favorite on the outside. Going to be stretching out for the first time for Linda Rice. This horse has good tactical speed and a great outside attack post position. Yeah, sort of a similar situation to his last race where he was drawn outside um, and, you know, was able to use his speed effectively. I thought the three shortest prices on the line here, Dan, I didn't think they were that easy to separate. It's a pretty good matchup. Let's throw up the time form U.S. pace projector for this race because I might have some questions for it. I do think that the five color Mipazzi is going to make the lead. I'm not sure if Bank on Shea, the four, is going to be close. I think Silly K is going to be sitting off of color Mipazzi, and if that's the case... That's a real nice target for the favorite to have. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't, you know, color me Potsy. I guess he could make the lead in here. It's not like he's a real blazer, but maybe he'll make the front here. I don't think they're going to send Silly K, Dan, but he's just perfectly drawn to track outside. The number one is Microscope, who had a two-race win streak snapped last time out. He ran well last time out in his first time at a mile, losing by a neck to Chowda. Both of his wins have come on wet track, so maybe you want to give Microscope a closer look if the track comes up wet. I suppose a wet track could help him. Something's going to have to help him because he hasn't really won a race yet. That's going to make him all that competitive with the three favorites, Dan. Um, the three horses coming out of that January 17th race. I just felt like they were all in pretty tough here. And one of them, the winner of that race, was the number two, Chowda, who handled the mile just nicely. We'll watch the race. Chowda is on the lead down towards the inside. Color Me Potsy's on the outside. It looked like Color Me Potsy's got some momentum. We see Chowda hanging on his left lead. We see Microscope hanging on his left lead. Somebody's going to win this thing. It eventually is going to be Chowda down towards the inside by a neck. Chowda's won his last two races on fast. He didn't run very well on a wet track, which is somewhat surprising because you would think Chowda would run well on Soupy going. <laughs> That's true. I guess that was maybe just a little bit too tough a spot on the wet track, Dan. Um, and it just feels like he's in a tough spot again here. You saw the replay of that race. It was not, you know, exactly. They weren't exactly flying home in that race. It looked like they were really struggling. And now they're all stepping up in class. While Banker also steps up in class, 15 to 1 on the morning line. Real good trainer. Michael Tenuzzo winning at about a 30% rate, doesn't have a lot of horses. We're going to watch Wild Banker's maiden win last time out. He came from off of the pace. He's on the outside in the blue cap rallying. This is a solid enough performance. He's paired up buyer tops now of 64. He has to take a step forward from the buyer scale. I guess he's hoping that this pace heats up a little bit. Yeah, I guess that is what he's hoping for here. Um, he just has, you know, slightly the best finish here. He's going to get it done in this race since they've stretched him out to a mile. His form has improved. I just don't think it's improved enough for him to win a race like this. Up next is number four, Bank on Shea, who is no match for Silly K in the notebook two starts back. Then they ran him in the New York Stallion Series over a sloppy track. We're going to watch that race if we can through the fog and the mire. He's down towards the inside, and he's going to rally right up the rail under Jose Lascano to win this race at 10-1. to 1. He's earned competitive buyer speed figures in all three lifetime starts. It's nice the time form U.S. has him close to the pace. I think if Jose Lascano can get him there, great. Then all of a sudden he has a chance. Of the three favorites, I kind of like him the least. I, I kind of feel the same way, but at the same time, I won't be surprised um, if he wins this race, Dan. I just, I like him as a horse overall. I like all three of his races. He looks good to me. Um, you know, that win that we just saw there, you could just see how well it worked out for him. He had tons of room down on the inside, and he just got it done. I still feel like Dream Bigger probably ran the better race of the two, but this horse got the big win for a big purse, and now they'll try and stretch him out. Color Me Potsy, we saw struggling to try to seal the deal against Chowda last time out. He just could not get by. It makes you wonder if a mile is really pushing his limits. His only win came at Finger Lakes. Yeah, I mean, I just I just can't get behind the horses coming out of that last race, Dan, especially as they step up and face better horses in this spot. He had no excuse last time. Uh, he just couldn't get it done. I wouldn't be surprised if the six Bourbon Bay actually ends up the favorite at post time based on the fact that he was second behind Independence Hall in the Jerome and he was nine to two against Independence Hall that day. Independence Hall, of course, came back to run an excellent second in the Sam F. Davis with a 92 buyer speed figure. We'll watch that race right now. It was Bourbon Bay's first race at a mile. He's in the red cap. He actually has a look at it for a brief instant turning into the stretch. Independence Hall is just too much horse and Bourbon Bay will eventually dead heat with the horse down on the rail. Prince of Pharaohs.
Yeah, I mean, I thought he ran well in this race, Bourbon Bay. Um, you know, you'll see in his PPs that in his debut, he was defeated by Chowda. Um, but Bourbon Bay ran way the best race that day, totally blew the start of his debut and actually did really well to be second. He broke poorly again in his second start, but he was able to overcome it and win. Now he's just got to get out of the gate, Then He's improving with every race. You don't worry about the mile. He's got to get out of the gate. And now we'll talk about Silly K, who has won two out of his last three, including the Rego Park Stakes. We'll watch that race where he tracked outside, takes over the lead. He's always very late to make his final lead change. I really don't worry too much about that. Silly K wins with a 77 buyer and really backed up and, and validated the 81 buyer speed figure that he earned two starts back in the notebook. And he's going to get the jump on a horse like Bourbon Bay turning into the lane. The question is the distance. Yeah, I mean, he's got to stretch out. And, you know, I guess that could be some question. Personally, I'm not that worried about it. He's bred to get it. He seems like a horse to me who will go a little bit longer. So we'll see what happens. I just really like his that last win of his day. I know it was a short field, um, but Dream Bigger was the favorite again. He was the horse to beat in there. And I just like the Silly K took the race right to him, um, had that horse put away at the top of the stretch and then went off. Let's take a look at our top picks for the $100,000 Gander Stakes. I think distance is going to make the difference here. I think Bourbon Bay has a big chance to run down Silly Key. I really think that Bourbon Bay is going to want the mile. You think Silly Key is going to get the jump. He is sharp right now. He has figures. But I agree with you. I think it's one of those two. Yeah, that's kind of how I looked at it. And I again, I don't want to discount Bacon on Shape right. too much. I just sort of slightly preferred the other two. It is interesting that... Jose Lascano, you know, rides all three of these. He's sticking with Bank on Shea. So maybe that means something, but I, I just, I'm taking Silly K in this race. Bank on Shea, of course, going out for Jason Service. He's our third pick. 6741 for me, 7642 for Mike. $100,000 Gander, the feature at the Big A on Sunday. Approximate post time, 425 Eastern. Best of luck.